Hi folks, thanks again for joining me. Um, another demonstration today, this is Cuckoo's Nook, just down the road from, from where I am. Um, did it from a photograph, I'll show you the photograph in a, in a minute. Um, quick mention of the books, uh, volume 2, it is available now on Amazon, um, softback, hardback. Kindle, still sorting out a slight technical problem with the Kindle, that will be available soon, I'll let you know as soon as it's available. Um, so let me show you the, the materials for this one. So the palette, we've got ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, lizard and crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber, light red. And the brushes I use, got the large on Rance and Ike, uh, number three rigger, and a little rigger, it's a zero or a one, I'm not sure, there's no writing on it, I'm not sure, and a three quarter inch flat. They're all Cutman watercolours, you'll see a full, uh, if you look in the description, you'll see a, a full list of materials. Here's my reference photograph I was using. Um, so we've got a whole mass of, of twigs and branches all twigs tangled together. So it's just a case of um, cutting out all the excess detail and just, just getting to the essence of the scene. So let's make a start. So let's kick it off. A bit of clean water. A bit of raw sienna. A bit of lemon yellow. A bit of background colour. A little bit of sky through there, so a bit of ultramarine, and then some of that sky reflecting the water below. Just keep an eye on all this paint dripping down the paper. Um, Try and get some atmospheric things going on. distance I can see some trees and bushes and things in the background that's all been reflected down below a bit of yellow in there and then the reflections that go along a little bit of burnt umber And the water cuts across something like that. Something along there like that. It's a little bit steeper than I was meant to do, but never mind. A bit of reflection down there. A bit of light red in there as well. Looks a total mess at the moment, hopefully it'll come together in time. Just mark that down there. Clean the brush. I'm going to put a few background twigs and branches and things growing. Put down the reflections as I go along. Bit of brown, bit of blue. Take that up to about there, and I'll do the rest later when it's dry so that it stands out better. And a few to the left, a few to the right, just mixing them up as I go along. Trying to get a bit of variation, trying to keep them all natural. Look on the top there as well. Right, get back to the banks. I've got enough water on there, so I want to keep this fairly dry. I'm just giving raw sienna. I'm going to get me a card out in a sec. Just, just scrapping a few little rocks here and there. A 
little bit of reflection. Clean the brush, get a little bit more green in there as well. Not too much water on the brush, plenty of pines. That's, you can see some green growing down there. Looking at that reflection as we go along. I'm going to pop a little bit more up there. And the reflections. A bit of green over here as well. We're constantly referring to that reference photo. I'll probably any further. I just want to pull this out flat against the easel. Fix it back up with those clippers. Yeah. I'll push it in. I'll tell you what else I can see. There is, I'm going to switch to this flat brush. Not too much water. I've got some strong paint on there. A bit of brown, a bit of blue. I can just see some, there's some fence posts up there. I'm going to pop those in. Something like that. I'm just scraping a few little rocks. I'll paint over some of these because I'm bound to go over the top with them. Down there. A few reflections as well, those rocks. Such a ultramarine mixed in there as well. Just constantly trying to get the variation going. The paint's grey, really darken it up. Just restraining yourself. It's so tense, you just get mad, just bang it away. Well, I mean, that's what I'm doing effectively, but just try not to paint over what you've already done is the, uh, is the hard part. Now that's dried a little bit, so I'll do over again with me number three rigger. Paint is a bit dry, so this time it'll go on a little bit stronger. So you see the difference now. A bit more brown in that, I came out a little bit blue. A bit more water as well, a bit dry. Um, pop those reflections in as you're doing along. They don't have to be exact, as long as they're all there about. No one will say anything. Just, just generally looking at the uh, photograph as a reference. I mean, these aren't exactly where they are in the in the photo. I mean, all we're doing is creating our own impression of the scene. Look at that reflection. A little bit deeper. And a whole load of massive tangled twigs and branches. All over the place. A few down below as well.
just drop in a few tweaks and things with this with this as well with the, the car just again just, just to just contrast against the others that are on there if you ever do too many just go straight over them like that Do some on this, this other side there. Um, so that again. The bank's sort of coming out of there, so we've got. Some tweaks and things coming off this one. And the load coming off this. Land, little land mass there in the foreground, left hand corner. Another big one up there. What I'm doing, just going brown and blue. Just the tweaks are going everywhere. Obviously, I'm not doing this at the start of each stroke. It's only when I know there's not much paint on the brush, I can afford to just whiz around like that. A few little reflections. Not many reflections on this one because we're right into the foreground on this side. load of things growing. She's growing horizontally as well, coming down into the water. Pop something down there. Yeah. To the bigger brush. Those twigs just coming down, you know, out into the water. Fingernails in there as well, scrape a few things in. Actually, I'm doing the wrong way, they're coming down like that. Some of these rocks a bit better now. And there are, I can't really see many rocks in the in the reference to be honest with you. I'm just popping them in anyway. A little bit of, a little bit of, uh, a few leaves on this left hand side. So I'm just gonna dry the brush. Just gonna fill up right out on the tea towel. And we're back into that lemon yellow. It'd be better if it was sort of neat, neat out the tube. But let's, let's just do that. I'm just gonna squeeze some straight out the tube. Do that colour down below. 
off a bit in there again just to break this up as well. Shadow this area. A bit of dark bits. Just explore these areas there. I mean, sort of white against dark. I've seen a few other ripples and things on the water. Um, just make sure it's flat first. And I might just do a quick dry. with a sharp edge. So just something like that, get it nice and sharp. Sharp and flat. Um I just put it like a water line so Get up the paint up there and just redistributing it in the lighter areas.
I'll see if I've made that better or worse, to be honest with you. Shadow colour. It's a bit dark. A bit dark there in there. darkening some of these just to make them stand out a little bit better. To finish it off, I'm gonna I need a smaller brush to see what you think. I'm just gonna stick a little. shadow down there. Not shadow reflection. Just stick my name in the corner and then stop messing about with it. So let's see what it looks like with the main song. So here's the finished painting in its mains. So if we compare it to the photograph, I've kept all the elements roughly in the same place, but just use it as a general guide really. There's that much detail everywhere it was a case of um, just trying to distill it and just keep the essence of the scene so I've broken it into essentially three separate land masses you've got the distance there and then you've got this one here sort of in the middle ground and the foreground here over on the left hand side so right in the background putting those distant bushes and trees there while it was still at its wettest see how it softened right off and then in front of those a little bit stronger try to vary the greens Lots of lemon yellow, ultramarine, pines grey, uh, probably a few other colours as well. Um, the fisherman wasn't in the photograph, I've just stuck him in there just to add an area of uh, extra interest. Then this uh, sort of right hand middle ground, you see I've sort of darkened the trees just to make them stand out even more from the background, give it that three dimensional look. Scraped a few rocks into the banks done this bit extra dark just to contrast against that lighter area behind it 
Added a few blobs of yellow here just to break up the uh, the darks. Bit of dry brushwork to paint in the leaves, all the foliage there in the treetops. And then moving right into the foreground here on the left hand side. Got this river bank here, scraped a few twigs and branches, sort of sloping right down into the water and then we've got our trees emerging from the bank, so up right out to the top of the foot of the uh, painting. See our massive tangled twigs and branches, just done with the rigger brush, just go mad with the rigger. Once you've got your main tree trunk on and the paint's coming off, you know, and there's, there's not much paint left on, you can, you can go barmy then, you know you're not going to do too much damage. A few blobs of neat lemon yellow there to suggest a bit of foliage against contrast against the dark trunks in the shadowy areas. That's it for that one then, so thanks for watching. Um, books are on Amazon, don't forget if you want to have a look over on there. Um, paintings as always are always on eBay if you want to place any bids. So until next time, thanks for watching, keep practicing. If you have any questions please don't hesitate to ask and I'll see you again soon.